from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parashat Ki Tete. Question, the Jewish attitude toward divorce. Let me preface my remarks by saying that on this very sensitive issue, uh, surely each case of marriage and divorce requires its own analysis, its own attention. And I speak here only in generalities and not in particular. Nonetheless, the question of the Jewish attitude toward divorce is a question that's worthy of review, perhaps in comparison to a more Christian attitude as well. If you look in the Torah on this week's parsha, it says, Ki kach ishi va'la. If a man takes a wife, and if she does not find favor in his eyes, for he has found in her a, a matter of immorality, he should write a writ of divorce, a book of, of excision, of cutting off of the two parties. And should put it in her hands, and should send her from his house. So the Torah seems to say that if indeed there is a, a breakup of the marriage, there should be a get, there should be a writ. As the, uh, the Sefer HaChinuch explains, we need to make sure that there is evidence that indeed she is divorced, and that's why she was able to go on and marry someone else. Now the question of whether divorce is good or divorce is bad uh, under certain circumstances, what, what those circumstances must be, is found in the analysis of these, this particular verse. On the one hand, it says, If she doesn't uh, find favor in his eyes, he just doesn't like her anymore, whatever reason there may be. On the other hand, it says, Why? He didn't, doesn't find favor because he has found a matter of immorality, promiscuity, that she has, and therefore that's why they're getting divorced. So do we need the strong grounds for divorce, like in the old New York state laws where you had to find that there was actual promiscuity, actual adultery on her part? Or could it just be that he doesn't like her? If we look, of course, in Breshit, the notion of marriage seems to be very, uh, very, very spiritual notion. A man will leave his, his mother and his father, and he will cling to his wife, and they shall be as one flesh. It seems that this, they become as one flesh, they become one being. Nonetheless, the Torah provides here in this parsha for divorce, but under what circumstances? So the famous last Mishnah in Gitin, page 90, Beit Shammai Omim, the house of Shammai, take a strict approach. He must, as the verse says, find a matter of promiscuity in her. Not necessarily totally uh, that she committed adultery, but at least a matter of promiscuity. Shinemar, as it says, he, uh, he quotes the verse that there must be an element of that. Rabbi Hillel Omrim, the house of Hillel, say, No, let's take the other opposite approach. She, it says he doesn't like her even if she burnt his soup. Whatever frivolous, foolish reason that you can surely hear about in the various divorce courts, even if it's that, a man and wife don't have to be chained together forever if he chooses. It's, there's a voluntary uh, association here. He may exit. Now, how is he going to support himself in the verses? So here, the Ritva, uh, earlier Gaonim, uh, explained that perhaps the, the Torah is not to be read at he didn't like her because he found a promiscu promiscuous matter, but rather uh, he didn't like her or he found a promiscuous matter. This is one interpretation. There is a third opinion Perhaps it's, uh, it's related to the opinion of, Be of Beit Hillel, that what? Even if he found someone else uh, who was uh, more beautiful than her, uh, th even this would be grounds for divorce. Could be a very, very frivolous uh, matter. Now, uh, obviously we follow Beit Hillel, and we, we do not require a serious grounds uh, for divorce, but... The rabbis in the days, not of the Mishnah, but of the Gemara, the Amoraim, they also kind of debated this point, and they said as follows. Shalach Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda, uh, I'm sorry. Rabbi Huda Omer, im seneta, shalach. If, you, uh, if a person 
uh, hated a woman. Ki sanei shalach, the Pasuk in Malachi, a verse in Malachi says, he sends off the one he hates. So he says what it means is as follows, that if he hates her, he should send her away. Why should two people who are chained to each other who can't stand each other? Rabbi Yochanan says sanui am shalach. Rabbi Yochanan says that the one who is sent is hated. That's what the verse means. God hates the one who sends. The Gemara says it's not really a debate. It sounds like polar opposites. It's not. If it's the first shidduch, it's, if it's their first marriage, so then it's, it's, it's despised if he sends her. But in the second marriage, then uh, if he wants to send her, he may. Uh, Rabbi Ezra says that when a person uh, divorces his first wife, even the altar itself cries for this situation. And it quotes a verse uh, a verse there in Malachi, that, uh, the idea that marriage for a first wife is Eshet Ni'urechas, is the wife of your youth, Asher Bagad Taba, is a matter of treachery here, and she's Eshet Britecha, she's your friend, Chaver Retecha, but Eshet Britecha, she's, there's a covenant here. Covenants are not really supposed to be broken. Is a wife of your early covenant. The Me'iri reflects this idea as well, saying that if the, if the woman was, was uh, perfectly good, she was staying with him, and she, she loved him, and, and, uh, uh, and then it would be considered a, a, a serious a treachery of, sh- of sorts, assuming that there wasn't a serious matter that led to, to the divorce. The, uh, the Sefer Achinuch says... That, uh, that if there's a davar gadol, if there's something very great, uh, then, uh, then indeed uh, there, could be, there could be a divorce for that reason, for something that is, uh, that is a very great matter. It's interesting to note that in Christ, 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 Christian scriptures, the book of Matthew, that there they, uh, Jesus kind of dispenses with the laws of Moses, which he does in general, and that's why we find this uh, particularly uh, un-Jewish in that he uh, rejects uh, the laws of Moses, but nonetheless, it, c- it turns out that his view it seems on the surface of it not to be that different from Beit Shammai. He says, unless there's promiscuous matter, then, then there could be divorce. So it seems that, that the, the stricter view of Beit Shammai is simply endorsed by uh, Christian scriptures. However, uh, with a sort of anti-Mosaic notion that somehow these laws are very compromised in general, and uh, this is just a concession uh, to, to human uh, frailty. But th- that, is, that is indeed uh, a view. So which one is it? Is marriage something that's, uh, that's unbreakable? Is marriage something that could be whimsically broken up? Obviously, there's an interest in society to find a balance between keeping marriages together and not chaining one, one person uh, to the other. The ultimate law allows for free entry and, uh, and, uh, and uh, exit from marriage, but nonetheless, some catches had to be put in to make sure that people would not be overly frivolous about it. Therefore, the process of a get is more extensive, and, uh, and therefore, uh, the, it's, it's, it's uh, discouraged uh, by the rabbis, for certainly uh, for the first marriage. The notion of, of uh, a woman of, of one's covenant is most beautifully described by the, uh, the uh, Me'iri and by the Sefer HaChinuch. The Me'iri saying as follows, the woman that he grew up with, she, she, was, uh, she was very much immersed in, in her love of him. That, that could be considered a, a um, breaking of the covenant. In the, the words of the Sefer HaChinuch, he says that after all, it, it says that they, they have a brit, brit uh, that he says, some nations have a notion that they make a covenant that's so deep that there's no way, uh, no way of getting out at all. And he's, he's against that. He says that, uh, that no, there should, be, uh, there, sh- there should be some way in which two people can mutually agree uh, not to be together. On the one hand, as the Talmud says, divorce can be a very tragic thing. On the other hand, divorce can be a way of making sure that two, two people should never uh, feel like they're absolutely locked to each other 
despite uh, their, own, their own feelings. It's a very it's a sensitive issue, an issue that needs uh, further investigation. It's an issue that each case uh, needs to be looked at very, very carefully. Is divorce, uh, divorce uh, discouraged in the text? Uh, it's, it's ambiguous. Uh, does it require uh, actual adultery in order to, uh, in order to allow for uh, the man to send away the wife? It's ambiguous. It's debated. The law is that uh, there's somewhat of a looser uh, uh, allowance for divorce, but nonetheless, uh, the, there is a sentiment expressed in the Talmud uh, to try the best we can to keep families together, if it's at all possible. The ideal of, of Jewish marriage envisions two people in the Tzalem Elohim in, in the image of God, respecting the, the image of God in each one of them, Respect, creating a covenant that's uh, so deep uh, that, uh, that no one would, want, would ever want to get out of it. The challenge of remaining in marriage, uh, keeping a marriage together, working on a marriage, making sure that the two individuals continue to love each other, to remember why they came together to begin with. This is a challenge uh, all married people face, to try to remember the beauty of the chesed nuraych, the beauty of the love that they had together to begin with, to recreate that and capture that again, hopefully through that. The mizbech won't be morid ma'ot, there will not be uh, broken homes, and the Jewish people can continue to build batim ne'emanim Yisrael, homes that are steadfast and firm ne'emanim, you can count on them in the, in, among the people of Israel. Let us hope, indeed, this can be the case. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfarad Bethel Emeth Congregation. Please join us each week as we continue our discussions. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz for making today's presentation possible. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.